Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ontario Vintage Tractor. We are back at the farm today. Uh, we got a lot to get done. I got to change some belts on a haybine. Uh, our new baler has some belts that need to be changed on the bottom, as well as some pickup tines. I want to get the hydraulics uh, put on this WD. It's a list, and hay season's coming, so we're going to have to start picking them off one by one. I don't know how much we're going to get done, but we're going to start and go from there. Uh, one thing I need to mention, I still don't have my proper microphones yet. Uh, we're looking into a GoPro. I'm still using my phone. Right now, either I get my sound to cut out or we deal with a little bit of wind noise. So my apologies if there's wind noise today. Uh, that's the route I'm going to go, so at least you can hear what I'm saying. Uh, so let's get started. and Stay tuned. <laughs> So first things first, we have to get the loader off the WD. Uh, it's two pins, sorry, four pins because of the hydraulic cylinders, two at the mounts, and we have to take one bolt out to get the release mechanism off. Uh, from there, then we just put a ratchet strap around the pole and pick the loader up off.
So that's all there is to taking the loader off of the WD. Um, however, we can still use the three-point hitch with the hydraulics and the remote reservoirs that I'm about to put on because we have a lockout valve for the loader. So if you saw me go around the other side and turn something, that's just a lockout valve to lock out the front hydraulics. So that's it for uh, taking the loader off and let's get putting the hydraulic auxiliaries on. All right, so the purpose of what we're doing today, um, if you're not 100% familiar with the old way single hydraulics work, you've got one valve right here that's controlled by the lever up top. And what that allows you to do is lift an implement and then it's gravity down. However, most of today's implements and things like that, they require two. They want to go power up and power down. So that is why we have this little contraption here. Um, that fitting is going to come off and go on here as well. That gives us one set of remotes like a modern tractor. Uh, our plan here is to take that new idea baler that we just bought, which I'll do a bit of a feature on later, and we're going to try and round bill with the old stuff. It's electric tie and hydraulic dump. So what that should allow us to do, um, it's rated, I think that baler, they say 35 to 40 horsepower. So uh, a WD-45 should have no issue. This one is a WD, however, it has the power crater pistons in it. Uh, it had no problem spreading manure, so if it is gonna be able to bale, I think it'll do it. Uh, this is a process of removing the old single line hydraulics. We're gonna add this remote reservoir. And from there, we have to plumb two lines in. One is a hydraulic pressure line to run power to, or run hydraulic fluid to it. The other is return to tank. This one does have a return to tank. It doesn't just back feed. So what we're gonna do here is remove the factory lines. I've got two other hoses to put on. And it's as simple as bolting it on and connecting everything. And then we're gonna hook it up to the baler and see how it works. Now how someone mounted this old one is they just took the old brake duct off and mounted on top of the brake duct or the brake duct cover I should say um, and replaced it with that so we're gonna do the same thing it seemed to work I'm gonna try and do this with modifying as little from factory as possible. I do have another line if we need to go to the return to tank, but this already has one. So we're gonna try and remove the return to tank line here and plumb it into our hydraulic reservoir valve. Again, this was a used unit I took off an old tractor. I don't know if it's gonna work. It doesn't even look like it's gonna bolt down. So that's different. Should be the same cover but they've obviously modified that one and cut some of that off to fit to gain the clearance that they need which if i have to i'll do the same thing When I did put this tractor together, I had to put a decent amount of brake adjustment into it, which I'm assuming is a big part of why it's the way it is. But it looks like it's gonna pull down and straighten out just fine. And that's the side of the brake band that doesn't move, so it should cause us no trouble at all. However, time's gonna tell. see how we make it. Oh, 
don't know what it is with this old metal, but it almost never seizes it. Only thing I don't know if we're going to be able to do is get the bend in it right without kinking it to send it back to the tank. I may have to go and get myself the shorter bolts for that cover. But it's not a big deal because I do have trackers here. Yeah, see, that's a, a flared fitting. I don't think it's going to work for us. Because I think that is a JIC. Oh, it might go in. We'll see. It's not kinking. So we'll see if we can get it where it needs to be. I think our fittings are different sizes, but we'll try. Definitely saves a step if that works. Again, if it doesn't go, not a big deal. I have another real, another line to use. This will just make it a lot more simple if it does. Well, that was a much bigger task than I initially thought, but we did get it done. So now we have our 1950 WD with our new idea 483 round baler. And if you're wondering if we are going to try and round bow with this tractor, the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, you've seen that John Deere 5100R in some of our other videos. This year we're going to try and keep that tractor parked as much as we can. Uh, I've got loaders for these WDs. I've got square balers. I've got round balers. And we're going to ultimately see how it works out. We have this and a Gel 1310 round baler as well. It's a roll baler. This one's belts. There is a little bit of work to do to this baler still. Um, it needs pickup tines and it needs belts on the bottom as well. But I do have all that. Just uh, picking one thing off at a time here. So I'll take the camera here and then I'll run around and show you how we did it. Because as I was getting in the middle of that job, my camera died. So here we go. So to run this round baler, uh, you need one set of remotes and the tie is electric. So what we've got here, I don't have the PTO hooked up yet. I got to clean the shaft and get it done. So we've plumbed in one set of remotes to this WD. So your lever's right here. So basically what you'll do is you'll put your hydraulics up, up here like you used to, um, to make your loader go up and down or your three point, whatever you're doing. Um, and then your control is gonna come from here from now on. There's your two remote lines off the baler. And all you need to do to do that is tap in to the existing, uh, I'm not all of them have this return to tank line here. I don't know if you can see that right there so that's your return to tank that comes up goes to the valve and then you've got your pressure line and all you have to do is tap that into your existing hydraulic valve uh, because of the hand clutch on this you can disengage the movement of the tractor yet keep the pto and hydraulics running so that's what's going to make this able able to round bail they say that these 483s can be used with as low as 35 or 40 horsepower this has the power crater pistons in it like i said before so we should be in and around 40 horse so we're going to see how it works uh, we'll get spun around here and I'll show you the demo. My main concern when we were going to do this was the speed of the WD hydraulics. As long as you got the throttle up, it seems to be a good enough amount of speed to dump the bale, so I'm not really concerned about that.
So that's a wrap on the hydraulic install on the WD to run the round baler. I have a little bit of tilling I'm gonna do in the garden here before I take off for the day. Uh, all that's left to do is to run the electrical, which is no big deal to tie, uh, as this tractor's already 12 volt converted and has a full working charging system. So I'll get this unhooked. We'll go hook up to the tiller and we'll get some action of that too. Well, as it turns out, the PTO shaft on the tiller is too long for this tractor, which normally you could cut it down and make it work. Um, they do have to be cut to the size of the tractor, but what we'll do is we'll just opt for the tractor that it's already fit for. So here we go. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Ontario Vintage Tractor. Thanks for tuning in, and if you like what you're seeing, smash that subscribe button down in the corner. And until next time, take care, stay safe.